So the podcast has been around a couple of years now, you know, since I reinvented my channel. And I think that I really should have more subs, more views. But I think the reason I don't, guys, is because I always tell the truth. I'm always honest about my opinions. I don't just buy into whatever's popular. And this week, we're going to be talking about why I don't think that Studio Series 86 Springer is worth a purchase at all. We're going to get into that, the news, and go over our poll results right now. So the proponents and supporters of the people that buy and they have to purchase every single new figure representation of a character that Hasbro puts out, what they'll do, guys, with these simple retools or even more complex retools, repaints, they'll make big lists of why the new figures are so different. Some of them will anyway. Why we, you know, how they're superior to what's already been put out. And they'll make it seem like it's just the best value, the best deal, and the perfect representation of the character until the next version of the character comes along. And then they'll quickly jump the boat and go into that one. And I've seen it countless times. You have too, guys. Let's not be in denial here. When the Thrilling Dirty Springer was first released years ago, guys went all in on it. They said there'll never be another Springer. As soon as Siege came along, they jumped right into the next boat. And I'm not trying to be overly critical or tell somebody what they can and can't purchase, but that's what I've seen people try and do to me. So I'm just letting them know and everyone else here for you, your guys' listening pleasure of my counter argument and my rationale when it comes to that stuff. But before I get into all that, guys, if you haven't heard, you can click all those great links in the description below. It's going to take you to all kinds of cool stuff, including our Facebook group. There you can share your own channels or pages, chat bots with us, We'd be real glad to see you guys. You can also help support the podcast via Patreon. That $1 or $3 a month goes a long way to, towards helping the podcast, helping us get further equipment or better equipment here. But also it go, contributes to uh, supporting our giveaway figures, and we have one a month, guys. And if you support T-Talk Raw at the $1 level, you get an automatic entry every month in every giveaway we have. And at the $3 level, you get two. So you have a real good shot at winning a great figure just for helping support the podcast. But there's all kinds of cool links down there, guys. Check them out. Check my buddy Chuck's channel out and the Legion of Nerds over there. And I know that there's been some real bad events this weekend, guys, in terms of uh, politically. And hopefully this, this segment can remain lighthearted and fun and take your mind off some of that rough stuff going on in reality and in real life. But let's get right into it, guys. Why I don't think we need Studio Series 86 Springer. And here's a few of the points I've written down that a lot of the proponents and supporters of this figure and the guys trying to talk this figure up to a lot of people say. They say he's always ta he's inches taller. I saw a guy say that. I said he's maybe a centimeter taller, you know, due to minor retooling. And they'll state, well... The Studio Series has uh, much better paint. I don't think it is much better. I mean, look at the Siege Springer. Was this really that screen inaccurate? He has a little of that Siege gunk on him, but like I said, a little acetone gently used. We'll take that right off. I used it on my my uh, Siege Soundwave on his door, cassette door, took it right off. You just got to be careful with it. You know, you can't oversaturate, you can't overapply it because it can damage the plastic if you're not careful. But I don't think even that's distracting on Springer. It's kind of highlights him, you know. I, I, but is it screen accurate? Absolutely. I mean, he's he, he looks just like what I see on the screen. And by and large, it's the same figure. You know, they'll they'll point out all the part differences between the '86 one and the Siege. But there's far more, in my opinion, that's shared. Um. Just take a close look with your eyes, guys, and 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 you won't see many differences. Uh, it has. They'll say he has extra accessories. Well, the extra sword he comes with is pointless because the siege and the the uh, exclusive uh, wreckers version of that Springer have swords too, and all Springer needs is a sword, one sword. He doesn't need three, so I don't see the point there. There are some minor improvements, but again, they're very minor. A couple hinges, a little bit shinier coat of paint. You know, 
The, the engineering of the figure is the same. It's going to transform the same. And like I said, much of it is the same mold. So I don't see the point in this figure at all, guys. I mean, <clears throat> my opinion is if you missed out on the first two versions of that Springer, the Siege, then yeah, okay, pick up the 86. If you're a completionist, then yeah, pick up the 86. But if you're tired of wasting your money on what is essentially the same figure for a representation of the character that's just as good as the previous two representations of the character we already have. Just stop. Just say no. If I walk into your house, if you invite me over and I go into your house, you want to show me your Transformer collection, I'm not going to be any more impressed that you have the Studio Series 86 one and not the Siege one. If you have the Siege one, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be like, oh yeah, that's Springer, that's awesome. It's stupid to me, guys. If you, you know, and, and I get the impression that a lot of these folks that have to have these new figures are just there to, uh, these, these newer, and they put, a, they put a lot of pressure on individuals to make them feel like their collections are somehow inferior because they chose to stick with a previous representation of a version of a character. You know, if I stick with the Earthrise Optimus and I don't get on board with the 86 one because I don't think the Earthrise is a bad representation of the character, and I don't. I, I, you know, a collector shouldn't feel ashamed. And I'm not saying that I do, but I'm saying that's possible, you know, if you have a younger fan, a younger collector. So I think it's all in good fun. Collect what you like. If you like the Studio Series A6 Springer, go for it. If you like the new Optimus that's coming, go for it. If you missed out on it, go for it. But don't tell me that this figure is so much better than the previous release. It's not that much different than the previous release. But that's my opinion, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think, and let's move on to this week's poll results. Check out the poll results. And this week, we had a bunch of people that participated in this week's poll. Over 220 votes. Of course, we asked the question, what is the best live-action Transformers film? And a whopping 47% said Bumblebee. That's not really a surprise there. I know a lot of fans love that movie, and it was a decent film. Another 36% said the 2007 Bay film. And only 10% Rise of the Beast. The last night, and the rest of them got minor, minor amounts. But Bumblebee, by and large, I won't say the majority, but almost half, of the fans prefer it over any other live action film. So thank you guys for participating in this week's poll. We're going to have a new question up soon. Let's move on to this week's news. And of course, the Target exclusive Dead Brawn and Ratchet 2 pack has been found at U.S. retail stores. And uh, hopefully, if you guys are after this 2 pack, you'll be able to acquire it real soon. I just don't see the point really, but I never really saw the point in these dead figures anyway. It's kind of morbid, number one, but number two, what place in a collection, unless you have large spaces for dioramas, do these even fit? You're not going to display, I mean, I guess some folks will display a scene of all the, the Autobot shuttle and the four dead Autobots with the Decepticon standing over them, but I don't know. I, I just see it, that would take up so much space to me and I just don't have it, but maybe some of you guys do. And hopefully you get this two pack real soon. Of course, there's a new Transformers one extended clip provided by the Nickelodeon kids choice awards out there. And I watched this clip guys. And I don't think the film looks bad, you know, thinking about it and rewatch. I don't think it looks bad at all, but I do think it is solely targeted towards children. It's so campy. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you're after, but I'm, I'm after a more as an adult fan, a more serious tone. I'm going to go see the film, but I'm going to go into it lightheartedly. I'm not going to go into it expecting, you know, a, an adult or an older fan targeted story. So it, it's, it's clearly targeting children. But anyhow, uh, check out that clip if you haven't seen it already. We also have new in-hand images of Legacy United Voyager Metal Hawk. And speaking of figures we don't need, there's not, <laughs> there's not even any retooling done on this figure. It's just a straight-up repaint, and it's a very, it's like a different shade. I, I just don't understand, yes. I really don't. I mean, Hasbro's done, been doing this for years. I understand repaints are part of Transformers history, but at least make it a new character. You know, 
if you're going to repaint metal hog give us somebody else but anyway i digress we also have the Legacy United Wave 3 Deluxe Nucleus at uh, UK retail. And hopefully if you guys are after that Rock Lord stylized guy, then you can acquire him soon out there across the pond. Also, TFCon Toronto is happening this weekend, guys. So if you're there, be sure to say hi to everybody. And uh, yeah, let them know about T-Talk Raw if you're up there. Because I'm never going to be able to get up there. I, don't, I have a feeling, you know, here in Arkansas in the U.S. But that's going to wrap it up for this week, guys. Uh, we're going to be back next week with an all-new segment. Thank you, guys, each one of you, for all your support. Hitting that thumbs-up button, subscribing if you're not, and if you are. God bless you guys. We're going to be back real soon. Tell all our one. This podcast is made possible thanks to the support of listeners like you. Thank you.